<laughs> she gets whatever she wants. It was her birthday. Coach, every player that played in that game against Portland had a plus one, plus minus category. That doesn't happen very often. I'm curious, do you notice when you're coaching when the whole team is contributing in a variety of different ways? Or when you see that on the stat sheet, what do you think? Uh, as far as noticing it, you know, you have a, a feel for the game, you know, and, you know, for me, it's always when I know and, and I'm not nervous and I got to get guys back in, they're going on a run. We, we haven't sustained the lead, whatever it may be. Uh, when you don't have that uh, anxious feeling, if you will, you know, the group on the floor, Bones, Faku, PJ, Z, Jamichael are playing at a high level on both ends of the floor. Um, now, do you know all the details, everybody in a plus minus positive plus minus, maybe not, but you know, just generally speaking that, uh, the guys on the floor are doing their job and doing it at a high level. Uh, and that was great to see them score 63 points. And I think they made 15 threes. So, uh, it'd be great if we can do that again tonight. Well, could you just talk generally about, about playing the back-to-back -back games as opposed to regular games? Yeah, this is uh, obviously second night of a back-to-back, -back, fourth game in six nights. Um, and the last, the five-game homestand was tremendous, Chris, to go 5-0, and oh, but to do it with uh, Michael Porter out, Nicola out, Will Barton out, uh, just, just finding ways to win and seeing different guys step up. Uh, you know, this is always tough because, you know, you get in, even though the game started at 6 o'clock last night, every time you lose an hour coming here, you get to bed late, try to give these guys some rest during the day, um, and then you get them prepared mentally. You have a walkthrough, you watch them film, you watch their personnel, uh, and you remind them why we're able to beat them the, the, uh, the last game that we played them. You know, we held them to 29% from the field, 20 from three. We got rebounded them by around 15 or 16, um, and we had 28 or 29 assists. Uh, and that's my, been my message all along is understanding why you win, understanding why you lose. And we went five and zero oh because we've defended at a very high level, and the turnovers have come way down. Last five games, we've only averaged ten turnovers per game, uh, which is a marked difference from where it was to begin the year. So, Coach um, Cole is quickly climbing up the, the list of all-time lists for shooting assists, rebounds for the Nuggets, passing some of the great games in the team history. Consider that he's in cracked top ten in games played or minutes played. Um, Every day, are you just kind of amazed by what, what he's putting up? You know, uh, yeah, you're amazed. And then, you know, for me, it's almost like you come to expect it, rely upon it. You know, uh, he is the reigning MVP. He's our best player. Uh, and we ask him to do a ton. I think what's been great lately, to be honest, is while Nicola continues to play at an MVP level, he's having a lot of support. Other guys are stepping up and helping. You know, it can never be just on one player. The great teams, it's never just about one guy. But um, I think what I marvel at when I think about Nicola is just the consistency. I mean, and, and on top of the consistency, Bob, it would be um, the, the mental and physical toughness. The guy is one of the most reliable guys. He had the consecutive game streak snapped when he had that one game suspension. But um, he, he just keeps on going, man. There's like there's no slowing him down. And to me, that's truly remarkable. Watching the film back, and you talked after the game about how the basket was so big for everybody on the floor. And I know that when you guys were making shots, you were still very confident those shots would fall. Was there anything different about the looks in the last game watching it back? No, I mean, um, it's funny. Two games ago, I think we were one for 17 on open threes. And, and last night, obviously, we made a lot of those uh, to make 19 as a team. And we, what we, said to ourselves as a coaching staff is we just have to keep on promoting the quality of looks. You know, I think we generated 11 corner threes last night. Uh, so as long as they're generating the right types of threes, uh, we're not shooting zero pass, one pass contested threes. Uh, those shots are going to go in at some point. And last night they did, you know, uh, but I think the best part about it, Katie, is that when they weren't going in, we are still finding ways to win games. And that's what really good teams do. And for us, it's been the defense, you know, that has been a big part of it. And, you know, we'll have our hands full tonight against a very talented team in Dallas. Coach, I'd like to get your thoughts on the tape foul, the transition foul. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> you know, um, obviously, I think the league is, is looking at it. I think they've tried to use different rules within the G League to try to monitor it, you know, um, so it doesn't. Uh, there, it's a big kind of debate because it takes away some maybe 
spectacular transition plays. Uh, but for us, it's always about stealing possessions. We took four take fouls last night. Uh, we showed one of them this morning to our group. We take a foul, we take away one of their dunks. In the ensuing possession, we get a stop. Faku gets a run out and, and makes a layup. That's a four-point swing. I mean, so if you can use it uh, in the right manner, um, I, I think it can definitely help. If, if you're saving four points in one game, that, that's the difference in winning and losing certain nights. So, um, you know, as part of it, until the league makes any changes, we're going to try to use it to our advantage. Yeah, just follow up on that. So you save the two points there, but it leads to a foul trouble getting into the penalty quicker. And sometimes if Nicola takes it, then it leads him into foul trouble later in the game, doesn't it? Or yeah, we have, we, have, we have rules that we've gone over with our guys about, you know, how we want to use it, you know, uh, when we want to use it and who should be using it. Um, so, uh, yes, you're taking a foul. You're one foul closer to putting a team in the bonus. Um, but it's always about being smart with who takes it. We don't want Nicole taking take fouls. He does that sometimes, but he's too important. We can't have him on the bench in foul trouble because he's taken one or two take fouls in a game. He's, uh, that's, that's the responsibility of other guys who uh, may not be asked to play as many minutes and are not as maybe vital to, to, uh, to the outcome of the game. All right, we'll go to Mike Singer on the Zoom. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Um, two quick questions for you. First of all, uh, do you have an update on Will Barton? Uh, and then the second one, uh, Nicola mentioned it after the game, how much he enjoys playing with Jeff Green. You mentioned it. W what do you like about that pairing um, that, that we've seen in him in the starting group the last four games? Um, no official word on Will yet. Uh, we'll wait to talk to our training staff to see how his back is feeling. Um, and if he's not ready to go, we'll hopefully get him ready for Thursday night. And what I like about it is that Nicola likes it. All right, we got one more, Tim Carey, go ahead. Yeah, Tim Carey with The Athletic. Uh, this is the context of an NBA 75 project. Um, I'm sure you've been asked about Dirk and what he represents, you know, what he represented to the league over his career. I'm just wondering, you know, in your time around him, just in the NBA, is there any moment or story that stands out uh, personally that, that you got an interaction with him? Yeah, you know, I was uh, really fortunate. I participated in one of the uh, NBA's Basketball Without Borders uh, over in Africa. And uh, Dirk was a participant as well. And uh, we went to an orphanage one day and they had different groups of coaches and players walk around to some of the different houses at the orphanage. And, uh, and I was with Dirk. And what blew me away was here is uh, arguably, you know, one of the greatest shooters, players in NBA history, one of the greatest, uh, you know, international players, whatever you want to put on his name. Uh, but I was just kind of blown away by how humble he was and how just present he was, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't about Dirk. It was about, Hey, I'm, I'm here over in Africa. We're at an orphanage and just being a regular guy. Um, tremendous. I don't know him really well, but that week spending time with him, talking with him, getting to know him a little bit. Uh, Chris Fleming was one of my former assistant coaches was a head coach of the German national team. I'd gone over to Hamburg to watch them play, spent some time with Dirk there as well. Um, tremendous player, and I'm sure everybody here in Dallas knows this a lot better than I do, but just blown away by uh, the humility, how humble he was, and never uh, uh, allowed an MVP or his success on the court to take away from who he was at his core, and, and I respect the hell out of that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it.